Hi everyone, I'm back again, Jolie from A Little More Minis. And today I'm going to stain this and make it look like old wood. This is the deck. Look, this is really looking pretty old. This not so much, but it was two different ways of working with the solution that I made which is in this pot and I have a, a small video of that too how I made this it is really nasty stuff so you really have to be careful it stains pretty much everything not just wood so be careful that's why I wear gloves old clothes and I put this underneath my surface because this is gonna be like I don't know how it will come out anyhow this is the site that the fairy tree house will rest on it's the bottom plate the deck i call it and this is the underneath way the underside so these are the supplies that you need to create the effect that you saw before first you're going to put on your gloves because just i don't like uh, structure of steel wool if I touch it I get goosebumps from it and it can get a little bit messy too and then you take the scissors and cut off a piece of the steel wool that fits in your jar I can advise you to put some paper underneath which I didn't but it's easier to clean up after because you get all these small particles of steel on your surface so just a little tip then open the jar of course and tear up the steel wool and you will see later why I do that before you put it in the jar and after you tear it up you can put it in the jar I'm sorry about all the noises around me but it's very windy in Greece and warm and I have to work with the windows open so you hear some house noises and outside noises <laughs> well that's life and then uh, you're gonna put the vinegar in after this you can also use a different kind of vinegar you can use balsamico vinegar or apple vinegar it just gives a different effect than the one that I use I use the white vinegar and don't put so much as I did because it will get over the jar which it did in my case so a little bit less is better and then you're gonna add one tablespoon of salt coarse salt before you're gonna close the lid I didn't do that on this video I did it try that the next day and then put on the lid not too tight and leave it for 24 hours and then we're gonna go to the next stage So the next day I took an old colander and some old t-shirt and I drained the solution with uh, steel wool in an old bowl and I just took the steel wool and left the vinegar solution I put it back in the jar later put on gloves again <laughs> and you can see it's all uh, like rusty and then I'm tearing it up again and this is why it's easier to do it in the beginning I think and I spread it over the deck but I had really not so much it's eating up all the iron so I had the, to do this a couple of times so I can advise you to take some extra when you make this solution and then I put another piece of baking paper so it didn't collide to the to any other paper or stuff and put that over it you can do also the bottom side if you have enough of the steel wool I didn't and then I put something heavy on top of it and left it for 24 hours again to soak in so it's gonna soak in with this now and going on to the next day the next day it looks like this and it's all 
like working with the vinegar still because it was wet the steel wool and now I'm gonna pull it off from the deck and put it back in the pot and then I'm gonna do the other side also and the middle because I just didn't have enough and I made some more that day but that's not on the video it's just to show you this technique I think this will do but I had a couple of days work with this so here I'm pulling it off and putting it back in the jar and uh, yeah this is how it looks like it's really a nice effect it gives this really weathered look um, this is uh, all the rust dust that comes off and this is how it looks after that yeah, it looks really nice it's a good in uh, uh, technique it was not my invention obviously but uh, I don't remember where I got this from but it's a nice technique to use on also on normal furniture by the way so let's go on to where we started in the beginning so here we started with it has a mix match of colors because of the staining of the steel wool and I really love it and this is how it turned out and now we are going to take it and put the vinegar solution that you saw in the beginning without the steel wool on it and stain it a little bit more so let's go to that so make sure you have a window open or something ventilate the room because it's uh, vinegar and it really smells bad you don't want to breathe in all the foam foam fume from the vinegar the whole time um, it's not nice I'm just gonna put this in the vinegar okay see that no I need to put something to make sure that you can see that no oh my god where am I well anyhow I'm gonna put this in the vinegar all the time and put it on the deck I have to put it on the side because otherwise I will throw it over probably and I'm gonna just do this and it will not immediately probably but it will stain the wood if I am correct it will just takes a few hours I made the wood a little bit more rough to give it an old look with an, um, a brush from iron I go over like this to get a more older look on the on the wood and I don't want to make it too wet either I'm just gonna go like this and see what it does not too wet just like painting And then, and then, I don't know if it stays sharp. I cannot look at my camera at the moment. I hope it does. Probably not. And I want to create a worn look with this. So I'm not going to film all of it, you get the idea what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do everything on this and then I'm going to leave it alone, sorry, for an hour and uh, see what it does, if it needs more. So now I am about one and a half hour later and look how it's coloring darker. It still needs time, I think. 
I think it's gonna, it's not right yet, so it's gonna color more and it looks a bit different with that light than it does uh, outside. This is fake light, so, but I like it a lot. It's, uh, yeah, it's looking good. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, it really looks like weathered old wood. Uh, the house is going to be on this spot, so you're not going to see this eventually. What I also did, wait, let me show you, is some sticks. I stained some sticks. Let me see. Oh no, does it get sharp on there? No, it doesn't. Well, just a moment. I'm going to put something on it. So it does still doesn't these are the same sticks and I think depending on the wood that you use this I did two or three times I don't remember it. Oh. and this one I did one time so it depends on what you do how much you want to stain it Give it this look, but I really like that look. It's like weathered wood. Still can see the wood on it. The wood is still visible. It's not like when you paint it. Most of the times you don't see the wood anymore. And this it does. So I like it. And now I'm going to do the other side. You have to be careful though. Oh yeah, and this one I stained to it. It's a skewer. I put it I just put it in the solution in the pot. Um what I oh yes, this is what I wanted to say. This was a a fence already made I didn't make it I don't know which glue they used but you can still see hmm, that it doesn't stain this particular glue I don't know which glue it was because I didn't make it so I had it in my stash I don't know where it came from but I just wanted to give it a try to see what what it turned up and now I want to show you this. This is funny little looking birdhouse that I made. I did make this. Give me some light. More light. No more light. Well, it's a funny looking birdhouse. It's just an imagination thing. Just did something. Turned out nice. And this is uh, a towel, a piece of an old towel. And I'm going to try to give this the same um, solution. And I'm curious what will happen with the, with the towel. See what will happen to that one. Hope you can see this. It's a small birdhouse. funny thing but I like it so I'll give this a stain and I'll show you later so now I waited about a day it completely dried and I like the look of it it's really what I expected to do like it looks like it's been weathered for a long time and I'm going to um, dry brush it a little bit with white so it has more accents to the wood. It pops it up. This is how the birdhouse turned out. Hope you can see that. Wait. That turned out nice. And 
I also have another one, which I like better. I don't know why. I like this one better. Don't know if it's sharp. I hope so. I don't know exactly where I'm going to put them. I'll see that later when I'm building up the garden around the tree house. And then it will get some place. I don't know if I'm going to put both of them. But I'll find something. I also made this little shelf. Come on. Can you see that? I hope so. <coughs> this is also from the stained wood. Whoops. So clumsy. I don't know if I'm going to use it for this project or for another one. I just was in a, in a mood to make this. So this one is not stained or painted yet. I'm going to do that later. Probably going to use it in another project. But I really like them. They're always, you can use them in any project. Maybe I'm going to put some photographs the next time on my blog. So you can see how I make those. It's very easy. Well, I put up some white paint. It's just cheap white acrylic paint. I hope that it is sharp now. Let me check on that one. Is it? No, see? Yeah, now it is. So I put some white paint, just cheap paint, acrylic paint, and a, a pretty hard brush, dry one, to give it a little bit more of an accent. I'm good at, gonna put it in the paint, like this. And then you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. So I have a piece of kitchen paper, I don't know, and I'll put it off until it's completely dry, mostly. And then I'm going to brush on it, just like this. to highlight some of the accents. It's called dry brushing technique. I'm sure a lot of people know how it works. So what you do is Make sure your brush is dry as possible because otherwise you will paint it white and that's not what we want. I'm a little bit careful with this because I don't want to mess up what I did before. I guess I have not enough paint on it now, so I'm going to use some more. That's not a good idea, as you can see. So you really have to be careful with this. I'm not left-handed, but I don't want to be in front of the camera, so... Hmm, I don't know, this is... Yeah, I think it will turn out okay, but it takes some time. Let me put that away before that gets white too. So 
So this is what I do now. Put in some more detail. You get more detail from this. At least that should be right now. paint the whole board like with this technique and then I'll come back I'm gonna stop the video now and I'll be back later I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to show you how it's looking you see you get a little bit more detail with this if it looks like this that's more I don't know that's what you wanna do so later you see how the details come out now, like here. And on the side. I hope the light is okay. You can see right, because I'm looking from a different angle now. I really like this. You don't want to push the brush too hard. It's just like stroking. Sometimes you could push it in. Uh, there's no paint on it now. But the effect is really... Yeah, this is what it does, the white. In the end. Because this is how it was. The other side. really gonna pop it up and make it alive it's alive <laughs> so I think it's gonna turn out really nice I tried a piece with a softer brush which is a lot softer this piece and you can see the difference and I like this better just wanted to test how that worked I like this better. I like especially, and if you put too much paint, you can wipe it off with a baby wipe, like here. If I don't like that, you can wipe it now. It's dried, but if it's not dried yet, by accident, too much paint, put a, take a baby wipe, and you can take it off. Especially, I like these pieces, which really come out now. So yeah, love it. So almost finished both sides. And I notice sometimes you really do want to push it in and give a little bit more pressure to the brush. Because, I don't know. And you have to be careful when you put the brush on, don't put it like this because you're going to have... Uh, a mark I don't know how to look this is what happens if you go like this flat this won't happen you see and that's a little bit annoying so don't put your brush like this put it like flat and then this you know I'm dabbing it a little bit oh. and if it's too much you can do this or, like I told before, take a wipe 
wipe it away. If you think it's too much white, take a baby wipe and take it off. That works. And if it's like here too white, I just go with my fingers and dab it in. And that works. And then I go. Now I'm pushing it more because it doesn't have a lot of paint on the brush. So I can really push my brush. Just, it's a matter of eyeballing too, what you like, uh, how much white it should have. Just follow your feeling. That's practically what I do with my miniatures. And most important thing is you have to like it. Nobody else has to like it because it's your work. And whatever you feel good about, it's good enough. It's good. I mean. I don't know how to explain it really in English, but as long as you like it, then it's perfect. Like I'm finished with this now. A little bit. I'm dabbing it on this because it's wood filler and no, it's not wood, it's silicone. So uh, it has a really different texture and it stays a little bit um, rubbery because it's silicone, of course. This is not the deck from above. This is the, it's going to be like this. I think, oh my God, this is not what I wanted. It's probably on the table. I don't know which side I prefer yet. I will see when I'm gonna put a house on it. Well, it's okay. I don't want it to be too wide, uh, and that's why I'm going over it with my fingers because they're dirty from holding the wood. I think I will give it a finish with matte, not glossy, varnish coat to protect it more when it's completely dried. So I'm going to leave it now. Check all the sides. Yeah, I think it's okay. This one, see, because of the putty, it doesn't really look like. So I'm probably gonna put this one on the back side. I don't like this side so much, but I do like this. This looks good. So probably it's gonna be. Oh, I'm sorry. Something like this. Or like this. I don't know yet. We'll see when I put a house on it. Tree house on it. For now, this is finished. And I really like it. I'm going to see if I can give you a close up. Is it sharp? Yeah, it is, it is sharp. I really love it. Turned out really nice. Yeah. Turned out nice. I love it. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it to dry and then I'm going to put a matte uh, varnish on it to keep it like this. So I'm back again and this is about a week later, maybe even more. 
um, the deck looks really nice, but about it is for me too much caramelly colored. It's not really dark brown like my tree houses. You can see that. So it turned out that after a week it's getting more lighter than it was in the beginning. And now I don't like it that much anymore. <laughs> so if you want to use this technique, please remind this. It will turn out lighter eventually as it did at my deck and it really w with this light it doesn't even look like a real thing you know it's more like it's how the light felt it's more like this so i'm gonna give it another wash with a mixture of dark brown and black and a lot of water and then again i'm going to dry brush it a little bit with white because I think I'm gonna be sorry if I put a deck like this on top. It's not. I eventually, I'm sorry. Eventually, it's not exactly the color I was aiming for. So yeah, if you like this color, go ahead, be my guest, and I hope you like the tutorial. But for this project, the color didn't turn out the way I wanted it. After a week, I'm glad I didn't put the deck on the tree stump yet so I'm still able to give it another wash and that's what I'm gonna do so I'll be back bye bye <laughs>